let's look into de Bruijn graphs. So de Bruijn graph is another uh, approach uh, uh, we have talked about OLC. So we'll look into this uh, topic in different uh, these these following steps. Just stay with me. Uh, so this approach is uh, used for uh, Solexa and uh, solid platforms and they generate overlapping substrings of length k from the reads. So what we do here is we are not taking those reads. Uh, we are actually subsetting those reads. Uh, we are looking into for example if the read is uh, 30 base pairs uh, we can divide into for example our k of gamer size is 3. So we can divide into uh, 10 different segments starting from position number 1. Same way we can do the same thing with position number 2 and position number 3. So in this way we will have a huge number of those gamers. So that's where the complexity of this algorithm is. Um, what we do next is we generate the de Brown graphs where our nodes are these gamers and uh, which are actually the uh, fixed length strings or gamers and edges they represents the overlaps of k minus one nucleotide. So one gamer should be matching to another one with k minus one length. So for example, uh, if the gamer size is three, at least two of them um, are, uh, I would say at most two of them, they should be overlapping with one another, not the third one. So two nodes are linked with an edge if they share a k minus one mer. And then we connect one gamer to another if the two gamers completely overlap except for one nucleotide at each end. If they completely overlap, uh, we will, we will uh, merge them together. Then within that um, graph which we have formulated, we'll try to find a Euler cycle. Uh, as we have seen earlier, it's where uh, we are visiting each edge of the graph exactly one time. So here is an example. We take a sequence. For example, the read is of size 4, ATGT, and we can have two possible scenarios. So we can have ATG. So our K size is actually 3 in this example. So K is equal to 3. And we can have these two K-mers. These two from this one and from third one we can have this one. When we put them together, so we have AT from the first one. These two they overlap. T and G with the second one. And we can have among us these K-mers which are coming from the second read. Here is the overlap and this is from the third one. When we put them together in a network, all of them, uh, we can have something like this. So we, we can have this AT and then we have this situation where we have TG. We can merge these two obviously. We can merge here, we can merge here. So in the middle we have TGs and we can have different routes. So we can have something like this and something like this and something like this. So we can get a consensus out of it. Different uh, DBG or de Brown graph assemblers uh, which are there. One is Euler, uh, one is Velvet, Alpath, Abyss, Soap, De Novo. Uh, so these are uh, some of them which are uh, frequently used in the genome assemblies. You might find them in literature, guys, uh, these uh, assemblers. Since they are dealing with uh, your solid or uh, Illumina Solexa data, so that's why they are there. Uh, they work best for short reads. Uh, there is no pairwise overlap computation and efficient algorithm because rather than uh, comparing those reads in terms of pairs, breaking them into those small uh, k-mers or small fragments and in the end it's merging those fragments together. So it's kind of efficient. And this approach is uh, most widely applied to short reads from Sulexa and solid platforms. <laughs>